We are looking at question 1 of the JAM 2019 physics exams. The force required to make an object of mass m traveling with velocity v turn in a cycle of radius r is our force is the product of mass times acceleration and our acceleration for any object undergoing circular motion is given by v squared over r so when we put v squared over r for a in this formula we're going to be having f is equal to mv squared over r that gives us option b as our correct answer question 2 of jam 2019 physics exams an ice cube floats in a glass of water filled to the brim what happens when the ice melts? We're going to be looking at this question in two ways. In the first state, for an ice cube to float, it must throw off water sufficient enough to support its weight in the glass of water. How much is that? That is simply volume, mass over density, where M is the mass of the ice cube and D is the volume of water. And so in the second state, when the ice melts, it should produce enough water that is equal in amount to the one that was thrown out or displaced. So basically, the volume of water will remain the same. So the correct answer to that question is option B. The water level remains the same. Jam 2019 physics question number 3. A 500 kilogram car, which was initially at rest, traveled with an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. Its kinetic energy after 4 seconds was In this question we are given a mass of 500 kg, acceleration of 5 meters per second squared, and a time of 4 seconds. Formula for calculating kinetic energy is half mass times velocity squared, but our velocity is equal to at plus u, where a is our acceleration, t is our time, and u is our initial velocity. So our kinetic energy is simply half times mass times acceleration times time plus initial velocity all squared. This is coming from this V squared. So we're going to be having half times 500 times 5 times 4 plus 0. Our U is equal to 0 all squared. And that will simply give us 250 times 400. And if we multiply that, we're going to be having 10 raised to the power of 5 joules. So our answer here is option A, which is 10 raised to the power of 5 joules. Jam 2019 physics question number 4. Which of the following are true of atoms? A. Atoms are indestructible. B. The number of protons equal the number of electrons. C. Atoms of different substances have different weights. D, all of the above. In this question, all of the options we have are properties of atom. So the answer to this question is option D, which is all of the above. Jam 2019 physics question number 5. The pressure cooker saves both time and fuel in cooking because inside the cooker, the A, pressure is constant, boiling point of water is raised, C, it is completely trapped and D, temperature is evenly distributed. Pressure cooking is simply a process of cooking using high pressure in a sealed vessel called pressure cooker. This high pressure tends to limit boiling and increases the cooking temperature above 100 degrees Celsius. So in these options, the correct option will be boiling points of water is raised, which is option B. Jam 2019 physics question number 6. The vapor is said to be saturated when A. More molecules return to the liquid than leave it. B. The vapor pressure is atmospheric. C. In a dynamic equilibrium. D. The temperature of the vapor varies. By definition, a vapor of a substance is said to be saturated when its pressure at a given temperature of the substance is in equilibrium with its liquid form. It is also known as equilibrium vapor pressure. So from our definition, the correct answer to this question is option C. It must be in a dynamic equilibrium. Jam 2019 physics, question number 7. The following types of waves are all transverse except A. Light waves, B. Radio waves, C. Surface waves on water, and D. Sound waves. Before we answer this question, let us take a look at waves. 
We have two types of waves, longitudinal waves, which the vibration of the wave travels parallel to the direction of the wave travel. For example, sound waves. We have transverse waves. In transverse waves, the vibration of the wave is perpendicular to the wave travel. Example, light waves and water waves. So the correct answer to this question is option D, which is sound waves. Question 8 of the JAM 2019 physics examination. What is the total resistance of the circuit diagram below? This is a connection in parallel. So we're going to be using the formula 1 over R is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Our 1 over R will be equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. You can get those values from here. 2, 3, 6. So that's going to give us 1 over 1. And so our 1 over arrow is equal to 1 over 1. Therefore, our arrow is equal to 1. Jam 2019 physics question number 9. A ship traveling towards a cliff receives the echo of its whistle after 3.5 seconds. A short while later, it receives the echo after 2.5 seconds. If the speed of sound in air under the prevailing condition, how much closer is the ship to the cliff? First of all, we'll be looking at um, the parameters. We have our V to be 250 meters per second. We have our T1 to be 2.5 seconds. Our T2 to be 3.5 seconds. And we're going to be using the formula V, which is velocity, is equal to 2S all over T, where S is our distance and T is our time. So we have our V, 250, is equal to 2S all over change in time. That will give us 250 is equal to 2s all over 3.5 minus 2.5. We'll be having 250 is equal to 2s all over 1. If we cross multiply, we're going to be having 250 times 1 is equal to 2s. That will give us 2s is equal to 250. And our s is equal to 250 all over 2, which will give us 125 meters. So the correct answer to this question is option A. 125 meters. Jam 2019 physics question number 10. For which of the underlisted quantities is the derived unit equal to ml raised to the power 2 t raised to the power minus 2? That is mass, length, and time. The correct answer to this question is option B, which is I and II, that is moment of a force and work. How true is this? Moment is simply the turning effect of a force and is given by force times distance. Work is also given by force times distance. And force is equal to mass times acceleration. We have our mass here, acceleration here, multiplied by our distance as given by the initial formula F times D. So we're both talking about distance, that is length between two points, when we talk about acceleration and uh, distance itself. So, we're going to be having mass multiplied by acceleration, which is given as velocity over time. That is length per unit time raised to the power 2 multiplied by L. So, if we sum this up, we're going to be having mass times L squared, which is L times L. And then we have our T raised to the power minus 2.